we made it. I can't believe it everyone, but we made it to 5,000 subscribers. God, I feel like a Fire Emblem Lord right now, since it's thanks to all of my brave and noble subscribers that we reached this milestone and achieved this victory together. It's thanks to all of you that my channel has been able to grow more than I ever imagined it would and something I'm well and truly proud of. It's thanks to all of you that I've pushed myself to make the videos you love and expanded my horizons with the content I put out. It's thanks to all of you that I was able to defeat the Black Knight and get revenge for my father and whoa, 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 got a bit too into it there. Let's reel it back now. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that all of this is thanks to you. And for that, I say from the bottom of my heart, thank you, all of you. Thank you so much. Well, now that we've got the formalities out of the way, it's Fire Emblem time once again. Man, fates better hurry up and get released in Europe already, or at this rate I'll run out of things to discuss concerning Fire Emblem. Speaking of which, throughout my time on YouTube, I've discussed various different aspects of the Fire Emblem series that are either shared amongst or exclusive to certain Fire Emblem games. Each of these factors helps to define the series, and in some cases make each game its own unique thing. While that's all well and good, and I love every Fire Emblem game I've played to date, yes, every Fire Emblem game, it got me thinking, what type of Fire Emblem game do I want to play? What Fire Emblem game would I like to play that incorporates the best elements of past games and makes something truly unique and special? The answer to that is Fate, but sadly Europeans got shafted once again with big Nintendo game release dates. Being serious here for a moment, there have been many plot points or features present in certain Fire Emblem games that I felt could have been explored further, or hell, I've often thought of spin-off games that could take the world and characters of Fire Emblem and apply them to a completely different genre, and I feel like having an entire game based around that would have been great. Well, that's why we're here today. So join me, my fellow mercenaries, I mean subscribers, as we celebrate the 5,000 subscribers special by counting down the 5 Fire Emblem games that I want to see made. And a quick shout out to Zerk Monster Hunter 4 for pitching this idea to me. Thank you very much for doing so, as this was a great way to celebrate this milestone, and I always appreciate your suggestions. I guess that makes you the Robin of the subscribers. Now before we begin, I have to clear a few things up. First, this is all just my opinion and pure speculation, since these Fire Emblem games don't exist, at least not now, and I'm purely expressing my opinions on what Fire Emblem games I would like to see made, so things like stats and numbers mean nothing here. Secondly, is that just for clarification, the reason I only chose 5 games was that there were only 5 games I could think of that I really wanted and I can talk about properly without coming off as forced or contrived, and the last thing I want to do is a subscriber special video that's half arsed, otherwise what kind of Fire Emblem Lord would I be? Actually, that would make me more like Makaya now that I think about it. Ugh. Thirdly, is that before anyone asks, no, none of these games are remakes since all the Fire Emblem games that I've played, I feel don't need remakes. And I know a lot of people say the Japanese exclusive Fire Emblem games should be remade for Western audiences much like Shadow Dragon, which I understand, but I haven't played those games yet, aside from Binding Blade, to make a fair judgement. The games that I will be talking about will either be spin-off games or games that tie into the events of other Fire Emblem games, so things like prequels and sequels, etc. On that note, because I will be discussing key events of certain Fire Emblem games, spoiler warning is in effect people, so watch at your own risk. And with that all cleared up, once again I ask you all to lend me your strength and your courage, since now we venture into the unknown, but with all of you by my side, I know that we can conquer this challenge and celebrate this victory together. And for the love of Ashira, don't you dare go dying on me, because permadeath is a bitch! <laughs> has always been one of the strongest aspects of any Fire Emblem game, and every Fire Emblem game I've played has a good story. That being said, Fire Emblem Awakening has, in my opinion, the weakest story out of all the Fire Emblem games. Not to say the story is bad, but rather the story feels kind of rushed and otherwise forced, and this is mainly due to the fact that Awakening essentially has two storylines combined into a single narrative. The first half deals with Yulise and the war against Plegion, and the second half is to do with Lucina coming back from the future to stop the fell dragon Grimmer. In this story arc, Lucina and the other children from Awakening come back in time in order to prevent the resurrection of the Fell Dragon Grima, and how in their time the world is on the brink of annihilation and they have lived their lives alone and in danger. This in itself is a good story arc, but I always thought to myself, what would it be like to play for the events leading up to the moment they all travel back through time? <laughs> Well, 
this isn't exactly what I thought when the idea of a futuristic Fire Emblem game came into my head. I mean, if it were up to me, I'd like to see a Fire Emblem game with lasers and lightsabers, but that's never going to happen, and hey, you can't win them all. Now I don't know if I would call this a sequel or a prequel, since the game is set after the events of Awakening, but in terms of story it takes place prior to the main narrative of Awakening. Man, this is more confusing than the Legend of Zelda timeline. Regardless, starting off this countdown, the game I'd like to see is a Fire Emblem game that takes place during the post-apocalyptic future of Awakening. Now the reason this is at the very bottom of this list is that I highly doubt this game will be made, and even if it is, it will more likely just be DLC, and to an extent this has somewhat been done with the Future Past DLC from Awakening. But I think a game like this could really help to expand upon the lives each of the Awakening children live, and possibly give us the darkest Fire Emblem game to date. Now I don't exactly know how this type of game will be structured in terms of the story, but I feel like Awakening, it should start off with Krom's death and soon after with the remaining Shepherds die. From there the game should time skip to the point in which the children are older and Lucina takes centre stage as the main character, and I feel the story should focus on Lucina going out of her way to not only fight back against Grima, but also after learning of the possibility to travel back through time, searching for and recruiting the children of the Shepherds in order for all of them to make it back to Krom's time. The best way I could describe this type of game would be that it plays out like part 1 of Radiant Dawn. Now that's not exactly a good sign, but hear me out. In the first part of Radiant Dawn, Micaiah and Soph along with the rest of the Dawn Brigade are fighting back against the Benion Empire. The team is very small, and most of the victories are small glimmers of hope against otherwise unbeatable odds, and for the most part the group is simply making do with the best they've got. I feel this type of story and tone could work really well for this game, as the future is meant to be bleak and harsh, so having it so that Lucina and the gang are fighting in order to survive, but their efforts are all but futile, would make the story much darker than most Fire Emblem games, and make the motivation to travel back through time even greater. I also feel this could be a great way to further character development for the Children of Awakening, since once you recruit them in Awakening, you find out that each of them had a lot of issues to deal with due to the loss of their parent and I feel a game like this will be a great way to explore why they're like this, as well as seeing them at their darkest moments. I also think both Lucina and Morgan would get a lot of great character development out of this, since let's just say for the sake of argument that all the children live apart from one another in order to stay safe from the fighting, and Lucina makes it her goal to find each of them and recruit them in order to fight back. Not only will this tie into the act of recruiting characters like in every Fire Emblem game, but it could also help to make Lucina much more of a Lord figure and become a beacon of hope that is able to inspire others even in the darkest of times. And in the case of Morgan, this type of story could do wonders for his or her character, since everyone would know that his or her father is the Fell Dragon Grima, and they will more than likely hate or resent Morgan, which could cause him or her to be filled with doubt and shame. But throughout the course of the story and by supporting other characters, in particular Lucina, which could once again paint her as more of a Lord, as well as having a similar relationship to Krom and Robin, Morgan can realise that he or she is his or her own person, and not his or her father. Plus it could explain why Morgan lost all the memories of her mother as well. I feel this type of Fire Emblem game could be very dark and sad, but also have a lot of heartwarming moments that would make the reunion the children have with their parents all the more tear-jerking. Now in terms of gameplay, I reckon they'll follow the formula used in Awakening, which I assumed was improved upon in Fate, as well as having a non-linear structure in order to recruit the children at different points in the game similar to Awakening. Speaking of similarities, that's the one thing that worries me about this game, if it were ever to be made. And it would be that if you don't have Awakening, then you'd be missing out on the full experience. What I mean by that is because one of the main points in Awakening is being able to pair up characters so that the children have different supports and skills, unless you have that data saved onto your 3DS, then you'll just have to stick with what are considered the canonical, or in this case default pairings of each child, as well as not getting any additional stat boosts or skills based on whichever parent you had in Awakening. Now this won't make the game unplayable or anything, in fact Pokemon Coliseum on the GameCube was a similar situation to this, and that game was perfectly fine regardless of whether or not you had Ruby or Sapphire, but I feel this type of game would really benefit from having the data from Awakening in it, in order to unlock lots of content like say flashbacks, supports and skills, as well as making each playthrough unique with different parents for each child. I also think this game should follow Radiant Dawn's example and make it hard. I'm serious, I think this Fire Emblem game should be really hard, since it would help to emphasise the post-apocalyptic nature of the game and make it so that it feels like these kids have been through hell. Now obviously I don't want the game to be cheap or broken, that's just stupid, but I feel this game should have lots of strong enemies and a lot of enemies to boot, since they're all risen, essentially making it so that you're facing a never-ending army, and I feel this Fire Emblem game should really encourage survivability and tactics over brute force, and make it so that you make the best use out of all your units, as well as how letting a unit die can really bite you in the ass hard. Not to mention, having those bonuses from Awakening could really help to make the game more manageable. 
While you could argue this game could be a bunch of DLC chapters and pretty much requires you to have Awakening beforehand, I still think a game like this could work really well. This type of Fire Emblem game could be one of the darkest and most difficult games in the series and probably a bit alienating to newcomers, but veteran fans, especially big fans of Awakening, could really get a lot out of this game. I know this probably isn't going to happen, but hey, I can dream, and that's all part of the fun speculation. As for what the game would be called, well it's set in the future, and it's post-apocalyptic, with the main narrative focused on trying to find hope in the bleakest of times. So if we take Dark and combine it with ideas of hope and dreams, let's say we call this game Fire Emblem Dark Souls. Oh my god, that makes so much sense! Fire Emblem Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn are some of the biggest and most epic games in the entire series, portraying various different themes and ideas. Now both of these games focus a lot on the idea of war being a terrible thing and being filled with moral grey, and this isn't new to the Fire Emblem series since pretty much every game focuses on these themes, but the Tellius series is probably the Fire Emblem game that explores these themes the most. One of the main plot points of the Tellius series revolves around Loran's medallion, and that how if war were to break out over the continent, then the Dark God would awaken along with the Goddess Ashira and wipe the world clean. Now despite this, both of these games' main narratives are focused on either preventing or ensuring that the Medallion awakens and at the end of Radiant Dawn we find out the history behind the Medallion and the promise made to Ashira by Laran and the three heroes. One of the more interesting aspects of this was the connection between Ashira and Yune and how their actions caused a great catastrophe across the world. Well I don't know about you, but personally I'd like to see this catastrophe for myself because it's not a Fire Emblem game without something that causes global annihilation. Well, that was certainly a rather dark way to introduce this entry, but hey, talking about the last entry really rubbed off on me. Yes, for number 4 into this, I would like to see a Path of Radiance prequel that follows the events that lead up to the fight between Ashira and Yune, as well as the story behind Loran's medallion. Now, this game is also rather iffy since a lot of the story was revealed at the end of Radiant Dawn, and needing to expand upon it may seem unnecessary, but I feel there's still a lot to be explored with this part of the Tellius series, and I feel it would shed a lot of light on the events that take place in the Tellius series, as well as giving a lot more backstory to some of the most interesting characters in the Fire Emblem series. Now in terms of story, I feel this game should play out like Radiant Dawn in terms of being split between various different parts where you take control of different characters slash armies in order to see the story from various different perspectives. The reason for this is that the conflict between Ashira and Yune began when there was a war between the Lagoos and the Bjorg, and because of this the goddess Ashunira lost control and accidentally flooded the world, leaving only the continent of Tellius behind and no others. After this, she disregarded her emotions and removed them from herself, forming the goddess Yune as she became Ashira and from there she felt that Yune should be silenced permanently and thus summoned her three heroes, Soen, Altina and Degizia to defeat her. I feel for this type of story, seeing it from various angles would help to paint the picture of Moral Grave very strongly here, as well as how both the gods and mortals have flaws them because of their emotions, but also how disregarding their emotions could be just as big of a flaw. Now I don't know exactly how the events leading up to the Flood of the Constant will play out, but I feel like taking the Radiant Dawn approach of playing as the Bjork first for one part and then the Lagoos in another would be a good way to see how the conflict arises and how each race views this war, not to mention how Ashunira handles this war and what causes her to have a breakdown. I feel this should be the longest part of the game since it will help to delve into the history of Tellius and allow us to see the different continents not featured in the Radiant series as well as brand new characters, not to mention how Ashunira changes because of war, since she is meant to be the voice of reason and the defined being. So seeing her lose herself to her emotions and cause a great crisis would honestly be rather shocking and actually rather sad, making it possibly one of the more emotional moments in the Fire Emblem series. Now once the flood takes place, I don't know whether or not some of the new characters will still be alive, but regardless, this is where Loran and the three heroes take center stage in order to fight against Yune. I feel this part of the story would be used to establish how Teleops was shaped into the world it is and how characters like Degincia took it upon themselves to change history and paint Yune as a dark god. It would also be interesting to explore the relationships between them since they all felt the Bjork and the Lagoos could live amongst each other, so being able to see them when they were younger and more optimistic could paint them in a different light than what they were like in the Tellius series, 
And of course, just being able to see these characters interact with each other and take it upon themselves to fight against Yune would be a rather epic finale to the game, and personally, I'd like to see more of Laurent's support about Tina and how he was before a certain tragedy befell him. From what I've said, it seems like a rather large undertaking to portray all this within a single narrative and not making it seem confusing or contrived, but I'm sure the developers could make it work, and just like the Telia series, this could be one of the biggest and most ambitious titles in the series. Now in terms of gameplay, I feel not much should change from the status quo concerning the Bjork characters, but with the Lagoos, I'm not sure if they'll go the Awakening route since they're over more consistent and balanced in terms of their abilities using stones, but the way the Lagoos are in the Telly series makes more sense in terms of their characteristics, so if they can come up with some sort of middle ground, then I think we're all good. I also think this should be a very big Fire Emblem game in terms of playing, in order to show all the different continents and establish all the characters within them as well as expanding more upon Ashinira's heroes and really building up the war between the two races and how Ashinira eventually falls victim to her emotions. I know this type of game doesn't seem like it's completely necessary since we already know a lot about the history of Tellius as well as what's going to happen in the end, so a game like this could be seen as filler to some, but I feel this type of game would be a really ambitious step for the series and while the Tellius series was already some of the most ambitious titles in the series to date, while not the darkest, this could be one of the more interesting Fire Emblem games concerning its theme as well as one of the most tragic because of the events that will take place, not to mention one of the most epic games as well. And as for the title, well if the game does get made, that would make it so that Path of Radiance takes place in the middle. So we embark on the Path of Radiance and eventually end up at the Radiant Dawn, and where it all began was in Fire Emblem, Lustrious Origin. Like I said at the beginning, I feel that Fire Emblem Awakening tried to combine two stories into a single narrative, and as such, I felt each arc was rather rushed and somewhat forced. Now I've already talked about how I feel about the Grimmer arc, but personally I felt the war with Plegion was a better arc of the two since there was a lot more interesting plot points in this arc and emotional moments, one of which being that Chroma's father was the reason behind the war that took place 15 years ago and nearly destroyed both nations. This was really interesting since the father of the main character was an otherwise tyrant and his actions had a great effect on the events that leading into Awakening, especially the ones surrounding Emeryn. Well if that's the case, if Binding Blake can get a prequel, then personally, I would love to see them make an Awakening prequel. Now this would be a very interesting Fire Emblem game to make, since there are essentially two ways the story could progress in this game, and either way would be filled with a sense of moral grey, as well as seeing both natures at their darkest moments. Not to mention I feel a game like this would help to really flesh out both Gangrel and especially Emerin, as well as seeing how Krom and Lyssa live their lives as children, and how their father's actions impact on all three of them. While it may seem silly to make two games based on the events that take place in Awakening, I feel this one would be stronger and more suited to have its own game since it could work as both a prequel and a standalone story much like Blazing Sword, plus you wouldn't need to have owned or played Awakening to get the most out of this game unlike the other suggestion I made. Now concerning the story, I feel that this game could either go in two directions, A, you play as Ulysse and you invade Plegion, or B, you play as Plegion and defend yourself from Ulysse. Hey look, it's fates all over again. Now there's always the possibility of being able to choose either storyline, but if the game has to focus on just one, well, while option B fits more in line with what Fire Emblem stories are known for since it's focused on stopping war rather than starting it, option A would tie the story better to Awakening since it would focus on Crumb's father as well as expanding upon Emrin's character greatly and the strife she had to deal with due to his actions. Not to mention I think it would be pretty cool to play a Fire Emblem game where instead of preventing war, you would play as the side who instigates it in the first place since there aren't many Fire Emblem games that really follow this type of story up and that's the reason Conquest would be the first route I play through in Fates. Now I don't know exactly how the story will progress or how the events will unfold, but I feel this game more than any other should focus a lot of its tension on the characters in order to establish the theme of moral grain. The reason for this is that Awakening tells us that Crom's father was an otherwise warmonger, so they could portray him as someone who's similar to Ashnard or Zephyr and paint him as the bad guy. But with that said, I feel aside from Emerin, the members of his army, or in this case the characters used throughout the game, could help to show that despite being invaders, they all have different feelings towards this war, with some of them being for and against it. This could help to show the type of internal conflict going on and how each character views the situation. Here's an idea for you. 
What if they have something similar to what they did with Milady and Zelgius, or better yet what Shadow Dragon did with Camus and Nina, where there is a knight in the army who serves the king with the utmost loyalty, but feels conflicted because of the feelings they have towards Emrin and the fact that she wants this war to stop and help to create peace. This type of thing could be a fantastic catalyst for some really emotional and powerful moments in the game, and once again emphasise the idea of moral grain. I also think this game should shed more light on Gangrel and how the events of the war made things worse for him and drove him mad on top of his upbringing. With this, we have a recipe for one of the most interesting and complex Fire Emblem games to date, and good lord, this game can really make us feel sorry for Emrin and how she had to deal with all the hate and misery her father caused after ascending to the throne, which eventually leads to her unfortunate death. Man, Dem feels. Gameplay-wise, I feel this game shouldn't be anything too different from the Fire Emblem norm, and pretty much do what Awakening did with the pair-up mechanic. Now, I don't know if you will play as Crump's father as the main lord, but I feel this Fire Emblem game should allow for a lot of characters to be recruited and playable in chapters in order to show the scope of the war and how it almost destroyed both nations. In terms of structure, I feel this game should be like Blazing Sword, where you can go through the game in a linear structure, but has side quests you can tackle if you meet certain conditions, which could help to show different sides of this war and emphasise Emerin's love for her people and how she wants to protect them and keep the peace. With these elements in mind, I think we have the making of a very strong Fire Emblem game on our hands. Like with Blazing Sword, this could act as both a great prequel and a solid standalone game. While it's purely speculation, I think something like this could really make up for the lackluster story Awakening had and offer us a Fire Emblem game where we essentially play as the bad guys, and this would definitely help the game to stand out amongst other Fire Emblem games, and as for the title, well the entire premise is about war that rips nations apart and leads to further conflict, so it shall be called Fire Emblem Arising Warfare. While some of you may think a prequel isn't needed and they should make a completely new game, remember, Blazing Sword was also a prequel to another Fire Emblem game, and Blazing Sword is one of the, if not the best Fire Emblem games to date. Speaking of Blazing Sword... Fire Emblem Blazing Sword is a master in the Fire Emblem series for various reasons. For one thing, it was the first Fire Emblem game to make it overseas here in the West, and it was the first Fire Emblem game to be a prequel set 20 years before the events of Binding Blade. Despite being a prequel, Blazing Sword still had a strong enough standalone story for players who had never experienced Binding Blade, but the main plot point connecting the two games was an event that took place over a thousand years ago known as the Scouring. This was an event where the dragons and the humans went to war with one another until the eight legends defeated the dragons and sent them through the Dragon's Gate, where both races were separated from each other until the events that take place in both GBA games. This was a crucial plot point in both games and tied heavily into the events that take place in both stories, but I always thought to myself, who exactly are these eight legends? What were they like? How did they come to possess the divine weapons? And for the love of God, can we please have a game based around this? <laughs> Wow, if this game were to be made, it would be a prequel to a prequel. If this keeps up, the Fire Emblem series will have the same confusing timeline as the Zelda series, and I didn't think that was possible at this point, even with Hyrule Historia. Putting the timeline aside for now, having a Fire Emblem game that takes place during the scouring is something I wanted the moment I played Blazing Sword, and after playing Binding Blade, I wanted it even more, and truth be told, I think this Fire Emblem game has the best chance of being made, since like Blazing Sword, it could work incredibly well as a standalone game, while being heavily tied to the two other games, as well as being one of the biggest and grandest Fire Emblem games in terms of scope and scale. Now granted, yes, it would certainly seem overdue at this point, since it's been almost 15 years since Blazing Sword. By the way, do you feel old now? But something like this isn't new for Nintendo. I mean, we had to wait 8 years for a sequel to Super Metroid, and 21 years for a new Kid Icarus game. Plus, we're still waiting for a new F-Zero game. Now when it comes to the story, I feel this game should take the path of Radiance approach of its characters, where they don't start out as lords, or in this case legends, but rather they each have their own lives, and when the war between the dragons takes place, they all join forces to fight back, and as the story continues, they become stronger and eventually find the strength and resolve to become the eight legends. Now I'm not too sure who the main character should be, but I feel Roland should essentially be the Ike of this game, since he's referred to as the champion, and seems to fit the role of Fire Emblem Lord the best out of the other seven legends, Plus, the fact that he founded Lycia and is Leeward's ancestor, having him be the main character makes the most sense to me. 
As for the other legends, well I reckon they should appear, or in this case be recruited, one by one in separate chapters, since they're going to be the ones that you're going to use in the final chapters, so you'd want to be able to train them up as much as possible. Though I think at least two or maybe three legends should be with you from the start, in particular Athos, since he plays a major role in Blazing Sword's story. Also, like Puff Radiance, I feel the idea of Moral Grey could work really well in this story, since the dragons and humans used to live in peace but are now at war, so seeing what all the characters think of the situation and how it affects their relationship with both mankind and the dragons would help to paint the picture of Moral Grey, much like the Lagoos and the Bjork in the Tellius series. I also think this game should take the Binding Blade approach when it comes to structure, since I feel this game should be linear like most Fire Emblem games, but depending on whichever characters you recruit and use in certain chapters, as well as meeting various different win conditions, you could travel to alternate chapters in the story and explore different plot points. The reason for this is that I imagine not all players will either use or recruit the 8 Legends, in which case they could just go through the standard route of the game's story, with the ending being that Mankind beats the Dragons, but if they do manage to unlock the alternate routes by using the 8 Legends, they could see more elements of the story and really flesh out each of the 8 legends so that we can see why they're referred to as legends, as well as getting the true ending of the game where the dragons go back through the Dragon's Gate. This method would help the game to work as both a prequel and a standalone game, since new players can go through the game normally no problem, but veterans can unlock alternate chapters and story arcs that strengthen the game's connection to Blazing Sword and Binding Blade. In terms of gameplay, the basic formula shouldn't change, but I reckon now they'll include the parent mechanic from Awakening which may annoy the Fire Emblem purists and such, so maybe an option to disable all pair-ups should be in place, or something like that, I don't know. Now in terms of the chapters and the like, like I said before, this game should be linear like Binding Blade with alternate chapters, but I also feel this game should be long, and I mean long, like Radio Dawn long. The reason for this is that I feel in order to get a real sense of scope with the war taking place, as well as establishing all of the countries of alive, the game has to be rather long in order to fit it all in without trying to rush past or squeeze too much into a limited number of chapters. Not to mention, if Roland is going to recruit the 8 Legends, plus other characters, he's probably going to have to travel all over alive in order to find them, so having a long game that allows time for each of these characters to develop and see the scope of the war, as well as establishing the dragons and their role in the story, I feel would really work best for this game. Now while this may be rather daunting for new players, or those who aren't into tactical RPGs that much, the solution to this is to do with the ultimate routes, which can give you access to many more chapters, whereas the standard route is shorter and takes less time to complete. This not only makes the game much more accessible to new players, but also increases the game's replay value by encouraging new players to play the alternate route in order to get more out of the game, and veterans would be more than satisfied with just how much content there is in the game. While it may be a long overdue prequel, I feel this Fire Emblem game should be the one that Nintendo makes if they have to make a sequel or a prequel to another Fire Emblem game, since I feel this game could work better as a standalone game regardless of whether or not you've played either Blazing Sword or Binding Blade. Not to mention, this could be one of the largest Fire Emblem games to date and much like both Blazing Sword and Path of Radiance, could be a Fire Emblem game that introduces new players to the series and satisfy veterans at the same time. And as for the title, well if the first game was called Binding Blade and the second one Blazing Sword, then the third one should be named Fire Emblem The Scorching Edge. And now that just leaves the number one entry. <laughs> Okay people, this is it. The Fire Emblem game I want made more than any other, and truth be told, this game isn't a main series Fire Emblem game, in fact it's a spin-off game. Yeah, that may sound stupid to most of you, but honest to god, ever since I started experiencing multiple Fire Emblem games, I wanted this spin-off, or in this case crossover, to happen so badly, and I think there would be nothing but pure greatness to come from it. Some of you may disagree, raise an eyebrow, call bullshit, or just come to my house and roast me alive, but I've made up my mind. The Fire Emblem game I want more than any other is Dynasty Warriors Cross Fire Emblem! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, yes, 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 I want this game so badly to happen, yes! <sighs> Must remain calm, this is just purely speculation. Anyway, yes, if my overly excited fanboy didn't make it obvious at this point, the Fire Emblem game I want made more than any other is Dynasty Warriors Cross Fire Emblem. Now aside from the fact that most of you are probably foaming at the mouth at this decision and clicking that dislike bar more times in the Federation Force trailer, I bet you're all wondering why. 
Why on earth, out of all the crossovers you could have for the Fire Emblem series, would you want Dynasty Warriors of all things? Well, trust me, I have many reasons as to why I want this crossover to happen. And even though it's probably not going to happen, the potential this idea holds could lead to something truly great and make quite possibly the best Fire Emblem spin-off game ever. Well, considering the only other spin-off game we have is Shin Megami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem, that's not going to be too difficult to beat. Though funny enough, some people consider Fire Emblem Awakening to be a spin-off game for some reason. Which, by the way, is just fucking stupid. Now, the Dynasty Warriors series has built a name for itself for being a very fun and flashy hack and slash that gets boring after a while, since it's rather repetitive, and truth be told, I can agree to that, since most Dynasty Warriors games don't hold my attention for too long, but I enjoy them regardless. I find that, however, Dynasty Warriors crossovers are much more fun to play, since while the gameplay doesn't change or anything, the fact that you're running around as your favourite character from whatever series, just ripping entire armies to pieces makes the experience so much more fun. I mean, I had so much fun playing Dynasty Warriors Gundam. I really enjoyed Dynasty Warriors One Piece, and good lord, I loved Hyrule Warriors so much. Now apply that to the Fire Emblem series, and holy shit, you're in for some of the most fun hack and slash action ever as your favourite Fire Emblem characters, and that would be awesome! I mean, let's think about this. Fire Emblem is all about strategy tactics, planning and patience in order to defeat the enemy and prevent casualties. While well, in Dynasty Warriors, that doesn't mean shit, since you can run around like a maniac just ripping entire armies to pieces and being the most unstoppable badass in the world, and being able to do this with your favourite Fire Emblem characters would be so awesome! Naturally, all the laws would be featured if this game was made, and just picture characters like Moth running around and gracefully cutting enemies to ribbons, or how about Lin wiping out entire armies in the blink of an eye? Actually being able to see Micaiah absolutely wreck shit, or even Ike just destroying countless amounts of soldiers because they'll get no sympathy from him. This would be so much fun and just seeing all these characters we know and love pulling off these over the top and ridiculously flashy moves would be a sight to behold. But it won't just be laws that are playable, since the Dynasty Warriors crossovers thrive from being able to play as as many characters as possible, and while the Fire Emblem series certainly has a large cast of characters to choose from. Now granted, we can't have every Fire Emblem character in the game, so I feel it should be restricted to 5 types of characters. First, obviously, is the Lords, that's a given at this point. Second is the plot important characters that are heavily tied to the main story. So people like Lelina, Guinevere, Nino and Jafar, Athos, Ninian and Nils, Innis, Larachelle, Grail, Mist, the Laguz Kings, the Herons, wouldn't that be surreal? Nasir, Soren, Renolf, Sanaki, Nina, Emerin, Tiki, Basilio, Flavia, and obviously Robin and Corin because, well, you know at this point. Third is the vassals, which are basically the ones who stay by the main character or lord's side throughout the entire game and are featured a lot in the story, so people like Seth, Titania, Kent, Sane, Soph, Sigrun, Tanith, Geoffrey, Lucia, Frederick, and so on. Fourth is the fan favourite characters, which are the ones most fans like and are the most popular characters outside of the previously mentioned character types, so people like Sue, Milady, Raven, Lucius, Canis, Matthew, Raph, Oswin, Gilliam, Joshua, Cormag, Ross, Natasha, Lute, Shinon, Astrid, Nephany, Jill, Mia, Marcia, Ileana, Zirok, Ha, Edward, Nolan, Aaron, Sheeda, Minerva, Baja, Anna, Owain, Morgan, Inigo, Cordelia, Lonku, Livia, and of course Sumia, because for the love of all that is sacred, if they do make this game and Sumia isn't in it, then someone will most definitely suffer from permadeath. And the final type of character, and easily the one I want to see the most in the game, is the villains. Oh yes! Being able to run around as Fire Emblem villains and just destroy everyone in your path would be the most intoxicating experience ever. I mean, picture being able to fly around as Ashnard and cut the enemy up to bloody pieces. Using the girl or lion to just cast magic that fills the entire screen and practically nuke the enemies being able to swat the enemy like flies with Saphir and just go through them like they're nothing, and the character I would play as the most by far, being able to destroy whoever stands in your way as the motherfucking Black Knight and just tear every idiot who dares to go up against you a new asshole. Oh god, I can barely contain the excitement. Just the thought of being able to do all this as my favourite fireman characters was more than enough to make me want this game made more than any other. And while probably not even half of these characters I mentioned would be in the game, just being able to play as multiple Fire Emblem characters for multiple games would more than satisfy me. But the one thing I feel this game could do which is better than all of that is having all these characters from different games and different times interacting with one another. 
This thought occurred to me when I was playing Hyrule Warriors, since in the story mode various characters from the Legend of Zelda series join forces in one timeline to fight against evil. Doing this for a Fire Emblem game would be so good, since while I don't know what the story would be, and to be honest it could simply be Fire Emblem Lords vs Fire Emblem villains for all I care, having these characters interact with one another would be awesome, especially since Fire Emblem thrives on support conversations and interesting characters. I would love to see Eric and Alencia interact, since they'd be so sweet and adorable together, almost like they were sisters. Having Lynn, Marth and Lucia interact would be cool, since they all have similar arcs in their respective games and would be able to relate to each other with the idea of losing your entire family. I would like to see Krom and Alin would interact, since they both have similar arcs of them taking up the throne after the death of a loved one on such short notice, plus they're both Fire Emblem dads, so it would be funny to see them talk about daddy issues and such. And my god, seeing Hector, Ephraim and Ike interact would be the funniest shit ever. Why would it be so funny? Because these three would be at each other's throat throughout the entire game. What with Hector's arrogance, Ephraim's overly protective nature and Ike's stubbornness, these three will be butting heads every five seconds and they become the three Fire Emblem stooges. But as cool as that idea is, more than anything I would love to see the villains interact. Oh my god. This would be so good if it were to happen, since the villains in Fire Emblem are some of the most interesting villains in any video game, and seeing them interact with one another would be so cool, especially since a lot of them have similar morals and motivations. Maybe it's just me, but being able to see Ashnod and Zephyr interact would be awesome since they both have similar views on mankind, as well as being famous warlords. Having both Nagal and Valadar interact would make some really wicked conversations concerning their goals, and just the fact that these two were pretty much cut from the same cloth. Being able to see Lion interact with Sephiroth could lead to some really emotional moments since they're both very sympathetic Fire Emblem characters and I could totally see these two having a master-student relationship. And my god, seeing Zelkius the Black Knight interacting with Camus the Sable would just be incredible because these two are just such awesome characters and have similar personalities and moral compasses. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if they probably became the best of friends or at the very least rivals with a deep respect for one another. All of this is purely speculation, and stuff I'm just wishing for at the end of the day. It's highly unlikely that any of these games will get made, but if they do, I'd be more than happy for it, and easily the game I want to be made the most, just for the pure fun, flashy and fan service field experience, would be Dynasty Warriors Cross Fire Emblem, which is why it takes the number one spot of the Fire Emblem games I want to see made. This has been Crash X 500. I wish you all a great night, take care, and once again I thank you all for making me reach this milestone. I couldn't have done it without you. With that said, I've been making these specials every couple of weeks because of how fast my channel is growing. I'm starting to feel these specials will lose their meaning if I keep making them this quickly. So the next time I do a subscriber special, it will be once I reach 10,000 subscribers. This doesn't mean I won't be making Fire Emblem videos until then, no, I will still be making them and other non-Fire Emblem related videos. But I don't want to be making specials every couple of weeks, otherwise it won't be, well, special. Plus, if I did, then it would interfere with the Fire Emblem Fates videos I planned for May and onwards, and we certainly don't want that to happen now, do we? So without further ado, I'll see you all next time.